Got some exciting scheduling news for Michigan State football and Michigan State basketball, and then the five best things that have happened to MSU football during this offseason. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening or watching to today's episode of Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Ever want to reach out? Locked on Spartans at gmail.com is the place to find us. We'll be doing some mailbag questions uh, later on this week, so if you've got one, Locked on Spartans at gmail.com is the place to go. Also, please rate, review, and subscribe to this year's podcast or YouTube channel. And hey, thanks a lot for giving us a watch or a listen. Let's get into the show here. Um, hey, we got some scheduling news today on this beautiful Monday in May. We are already thinking basketball season coming up, right? Who isn't? Uh, it's going to be a very exciting season, and we got some news on that front. And this is going to impact all of your Thanksgiving Day plans, so adjust your lives accordingly for this one. Get ready to just cut off all communication with your family on that Thursday in November because, well, if, if football doesn't get the juices flowing enough, if some Detroit Lions versus Green Bay Packers isn't enough for you, how about immediately after on the same channel? That's right, Michigan State for this versus the Arizona Wildcats. Now, this was a matchup that we already knew was going to happen, but it is officially on the books now. 4:30 p.m. tip on Fox on Thanksgiving. Don't eat, you just take the batteries out of your remote for crying out loud. Use those batteries to power up a remote-controlled car if you have little kids and have that entertain them the whole day because you, sir or ma'am, will be on the couch the entire day going Lions to Spartans. All on Fox. It's going to be great. It is going to be the Accreasure, sorry, the Accreasure Classic at Accreasure Arena in Palm Desert. Now, Accreasure, that is, uh, of course, the company where Greg Williams is the CEO of. Uh, that is a Spartan grad and a heavy Spartan donor. I don't think there's any coincidence to that being the case here. So, hey, a little bit of MSU connection. Hopefully, some of those funds can go to the officials for that game as well. But that's that's me saying that, not anyone else. Uh, no, it'll be a, a good matchup, though. MSU may be favored to win that game. Uh, they'll be the preseason top five team going into this game. Arizona, preseason top 25-ish team. Uh, they're left off on a few of those too early uh, top 25 rankings for the upcoming college basketball season. They're just inside the top 25 for a few of those. And... There's going to be a matchup going on down low in the paint uh, that originated from another continent, from Africa, because, hey, Mati Sissoko, of course, from Mali, Arizona, their best player next year, Omar Balo. He's also from Mali as well. He's a center, seven-footer, had 14 points, nine rebounds per game last year, 1.3 blocks. But outside of him, there's a lot of question marks with Arizona. Uh, Kirk Carissa, their guard, he left. He entered the transfer portal. He's over at West Virginia. So Michigan State, better team this game, but... Hey, anytime you're going to travel over two, three time zones to play a game in any sport, it's kind of tough when Arizona, it's not going to be a home game for them, but it's definitely going to be more comfortable to travel for them as well. But that's going to be another notch in the belt for Michigan State and Tom Izzo going into this season, of course, trying to you know, throw the hardest schedule possible. Right now, we already have the Champions Classic against Duke. That could very well be a one versus two game. If not, definitely a top five versus top five team game. And then, well, you have the Gavit games. Uh, UConn is reportedly out of the Gavit games, uh, but that leaves you still with Marquette, who could be another preseason top five team. And if not Marquette, then maybe Creighton, a team that's in a lot of top 20s, if not top 15s. So I don't know if it'll be as hard of a schedule as last year per se, but Believe me, if there's one man on the job to make a schedule as tough as possible, it's Tom Izzo. And, well, of course, when you book that Thanksgiving Day game, that is going to help that as well. Uh, also, hey, you know what? Uh, just to tie in some more NFL here with some scheduling news, when the NFL schedules dropped, um, this was mentioned a few times. I, I read this on Twitter, heard it over the radio and whatnot, but let's bring this up. Uh, the Seahawks play at the Lions in week two. Now, how does that affect us? How is that relevant to us? Well, that same weekend, the Washington Huskies face Michigan State at Spartan Stadium. 
They're, of course, out of Seattle. So that could even entice more Husky and Seahawks fans to fly over to sunny Michigan to catch a doubleheader Saturday, watch their Huskies play, and then the Seahawks. Now, I, I don't imagine it'll be you know, 30,000 Huskies fans uh, flying over, kind of like how Michigan State invaded Arizona State a few years ago. But that could absolutely bring in some scores of Washington fans for that game to make it a little more of a comfortable atmosphere. I still think Michigan State's going to have the heavy home field advantage, but still, just something notable from the NFL schedules getting dropped. Now, let's keep it over in football, but our Michigan State Spartans, there is one more game time that has been announced, 7.30 on NBC, November 11th, your Michigan State Spartans hitting the road to Columbus to face Ohio State in primetime under the lights. On NBC, I'll say that again, NBC, that's going to be strange to uh, watch a game where our Spartans are playing with that little Peacock logo up in the corner. The only time I really remember that happening was whenever Michigan State played Notre Dame. That's that's kind of the only real memories I have of that. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, please you know comment or reach out and, and you know, call me an idiot. But no, that's, that's going to be bizarre. But with the new TV contracts... Heck, MSU could be playing at any channel at any time, any week, it seems like. Uh, so, yeah, 730 in the horseshoe because if, as if traveling down to Columbus to face the Buckeyes isn't hard enough, let's just do that in front of a primetime audience. Uh, look, there's benefits to this, right? Uh, you guys know them all. More exposure for your program. Uh, more, you know, get that Spartan logo on TV in primetime. And you could probably hear the sound of my voice. I, I've been... I've been more thrilled at game times before. Look, quite frankly, I'm just going to shoot you straight here. Would not have minded if this was a 7 a.m. game on the QVC network or Bravo or C-SPAN 3, like some channel that no one is going to watch because I I don't have to tell you this, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, the last three meetings against Ohio State have been anything but good, anything but close. The last three meetings, and of course I'm highlighting the last three because that's the Mel Tucker era. Ohio State has won uh, 52.3 to 13 on average. That is an average of 39 points per game. And honestly, if you remember those earlier matchups, like, <laughs> God, that, that game at Columbus, not last year, but two years ago, that, that could have been 112 to zero if they really just kept the dogs in the entire game. But turns out they had uh, bigger fish to fry that season. Regardless, Michigan State pretty far behind Ohio State, and a primetime audience gets to see that. So that that's why I'm I'm a little like uh, just Debbie Downer ish about this. Believe me, we're not going to be this the entire episode, kind of like we were yesterday after Jamari Howard decommitted, and we talked about the state of recruiting. Second segment, and this is for me as much as it is for you. We're going to go through all the optimistic things that have happened to Michigan State during the off season. But man, ah, okay, seven thirty under. The lights here. That's the second primetime game, actually, for Michigan State. The other one that has been announced is uh, the Central game to kick off the season of the first Friday of September. So of the most recent news, you got that one to look forward to. I also just want to remark on one quick thing, too. This is another game that dropped Iowa at Penn State, 8 p.m. on CBS. Again, that is in Happy Valley. It is going to be a whiteout game. And why on earth am I bringing up Hawkeyes versus Nittany Lions? Well, that is the week before. Michigan State goes to Iowa. That's right. So, hey, you know what? The old adage is when you play a really good team, you don't play them once. Sometimes you play them twice. Now, what we mean by that is, well, let's say you play Alabama. You feel it that week, and they also are so good, so tough, so physical that you're going to feel it the week after that too. Now, Penn State is destined for a pretty good season here. Those whiteout crowds are electric. That is going to be a primetime game. Those players will be amped. So, hey, maybe – Maybe this will soften up Iowa for the very next game as Michigan State goes to a very tough game. I mean, because there's never an easy game at Kinnick Stadium. But yeah, maybe that helps Michigan State like a smidge. And we'll take any smidge that we can get around these parts. So yeah, just wanted to mention that Iowa at Penn State, September 23rd, the week before Iowa faces Michigan State. Uh, we will get into the most optimistic things that have happened in Michigan State's offseason here in a hot second. But first, I just need to talk your ear off about Built Bar. Gang, it's the best tasting protein bars in the land. I'm actually about to jet out and play some beach volleyball tonight. Uh, and I'm not going to do so until I smash a built bar because whether it's beach volleyball, whether it's a workout, a day of yard work, a day at the office, I mean, hey, 
it's always nice to throw down a built bar because these are incredible on the taste buds, wrapped in 100% real chocolate, better than a lot of candy bars that you've had. I mean, especially the churro puff bar or the brownie batter puff. My goodness gracious, they go hard. And they also are just about 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. So next time you're out and about at Sam's Club, for example, or Walmart, hey, go grab yourself a 13 bar box of those flavors I just rattled off brownie, batter puff, churro puff, or hey, if you're old fashioned and just like the good old internet, built.com is where to get those built bars, built puffs, and all the built products. Again, go stock up on your built bars at built.com. All right. So yesterday was, um, I wouldn't categorize it as a happy episode per se. We talked about the Jamari Howard decommitment and well, like that's like to be expected. It was rumored for a very long time. We took a look at the picture of Michigan State recruiting for 2024 and the fact that there's only, well, three guys in the class right now, while other programs like Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan all have 13 or more kids. Well, okay. It, it was kind of a somber first segment. So we're going to take some medicine today. Hey, it, it's not all bad. You know, when we're talking about this stuff and we're talking about our off season, which like hasn't been all good news. It's not to say like the ship has completely sunk, you know, like we're not at DEFCON 1. There are some good things that have happened. There still is plenty of reason to believe Michigan State can have a solid season coming up in the fall. So, hey, it's Top 5 Tuesday. We've been doing this during the off season. Top 5 list here and there. So today's Top 5 list is, hey, Top 5 reasons of optimism for Michigan State football's off season, or Top 5 things that happened to Michigan State in the off season. So let's just get to it. Number 1. He's actually cheating. I'm going to use two players, but one position, and that is the running back position. Who have they added in that room with Nathan Carter, Jaron Mangum? You've heard us talk up and down about these guys so far this offseason, and it cannot be overstated how important the addition of those two players are. Last year, let's just look at the Michigan State side of things, all right? The run game, 111th in opportunity rate. Now, that's very easy to understand. It's, hey, how many times, or what's the percentage of times you get at least four yards on a carry? And they weed out the third and one at the goal lines. Like, those aren't counted. There has to be four yards available to pick up. What percentage of time do you get that? Michigan State was 111th best in the country. That's not good. How about this? Power success rate. That's when it's third or fourth down with two or less yards to go. What percentage of the time do you pick up that first down? Well, Michigan State was 118th in that stat. My goodness gracious. Stuff rate, very easy to figure out. How many, sorry, God, the percentage of times the run play gets stopped behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage, MSU 103rd. Guys, that's a, that's a long way and a very numeric way of saying run game stunk out loud last year, especially when it came to power running, short yardage situations, just getting through the line of scrimmage when you absolutely had to. Nathan Carter, all right, 5'9", 200 pounds, 0.000001% body fat. Just look at a single picture of him. He led the nation in yards after contact last year before he went down with an injury. Okay, that's going to shore up. Probably a lot of those issues, all right? And not all of them was just on the running backs. But look, letting Nathan Carter is a far cry from what we had with Jarek Broussard last year, for example, or even Jaron Mangum. How about this? You want more power? How about six foot two, 231 pounds of it coming at you? I don't think short yardage situations are going to be a problem this year like they were for Michigan State last year. All right. And hey, sometimes it is just as easy as tacking on two really good, really strong running backs. And that's what Michigan State did. Number two, the best thing that's happened to Michigan State in this offseason. Let's, let's go down to College Station, Texas A&M, because we went fishing and we reeled in to Misi Adelaide. That's right. He is a former five-star defensive lineman. And everything that we talked about before spring ball was repeated in spring ball anytime someone spoke about to Misi. All right. He's versatile. He can go inside. He can go outside. He's a great pass rusher. If you want to bounce him inside, maybe some NASCAR packages. And what I mean by that is throwing on a bunch of fast pass rushers on the four dots on those defensive lines right there. All right. You can have packages with him inside and out. And look, Chris Bogle came on at the end of last season before missing the rest with an injury. Okay, so you have Tumi Say on one side, Chris Bogle on the other, or Avery Dunn, Zion Young, whatever it is. Or inside, I mean, God, 
just like pair him up with Simeon Barrow or Derek Harmon or even Maverick Hansen, Jared Jack, Dre Butler. Like there's a lot of depth to be had on the defensive line this year, but that was a key addition. And that was an addition where Michigan State had to beat out a lot of top flight programs to win the services of Tun Mise coming up this year. So number three best thing that's happened to Michigan State this offseason is how about just the guys that have returned? All right, there have been a lot of headlines. We've talked a lot about the people that have left uh, very recently, of course. Let's give some, some shine to some key guys that have stayed, though. Guys that didn't have to stay. We're talking guys like J.D. Duplain, who's already been here for four years, or Nick Samak, a guy that's already been here for five years. Jacoby Winman, of course, could have gone to the NFL draft. Uh, Chuck Brantley, he tried his hand in the transfer portal, and then within 48 hours, whoop, decided to come back to Michigan State. And each of those guys, very important to a good season next year for Michigan State. Goes without saying for the offensive line, right? I mean, last year, or from last year, you're already replacing one interior offensive lineman. Gino Vandermark seems to be the guy that's going to fill that spot uh, for Matt Allen. Or it could be Keyshawn Blackstock. Regardless, you do have two good options for that spot. Way easier to fill in one spot than it is two in spots. And how about some guys that are Big Ten honorable mentions in J.D. Duplain and Nick Samak? Two lead the way for new running backs, a new face at quarterback as well. And you're already feeling pretty good about your bookends too with the left tackle and right tackle. But the interior line, it's improving throughout the season last year. And with a healthy spring, I mean, Coach Kapilovic said it in an interview very recently that they are light years ahead of where they were last spring. And I don't know if that happens without Duplain or Samak. Jacoby Winman, you guys already know his deal. A multi-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, National Defensive Player of the Week to kick off the season last year. Can play edge, but he will pay, play linebacker to start off this season and just an instant impact guy. And then Chuck Brantley as well. Look, you need as many bodies as you possibly can at that cornerback position. If Chuck Brantley left, then that is a cupboard that is left pretty bare. But no, you get a guy that has been in the Scotty Hazleton system for quite some time now. So yeah, God, it's, it, it is it is nice to keep those guys. Number four, best thing that's happened in this offseason. You know what? There's a lot of people that are crying uh, good riddance about Peyton Thorne leaving this program. And maybe that's the reason for you. But I'm going to bring up quarterbacks as number four, just in this regard. You know, Peyton was was fine. You know, he was solid. Uh, maybe he could have had a really good year. But, hey, regardless, this is a situation at hand right now is that you are down to two quarterbacks. But I think this is good news because, well, it's already two quarterbacks that were competing already for the starting job. It's not like this whole offseason. It was, yeah, well, Peyton's going to be the starter. And then, oh, my goodness, well, crap, The he left. And the guys behind him were just playing with the twos, and they didn't really have the mentality of being the starter or anything like that. Like, no, that, that switch has already been flipped when this offseason started. So when Peyton leaves, it's not a whole summer of mystery as to what are the quarterbacks thinking, what's it going to be like in the fall when we come back, and, okay, now they're practicing with the ones. Like, that's already kind of been installed. And also, no coach has said this, but we could see it with their actions, or rather inactions of searching for another quarterback in the portal. Like, they didn't go out and try to get Casey Thompson, all right, who entered the portal from Nebraska. They didn't try to get TJ Finley, who will open up that spot for Peyton Thorne. They're not trying to get another quarterback because they like who is in their room. They had a full spring practice cycle to see who is in their room, to say, hey, you know what? There's probably only going to be two quarterbacks at the end of this anyway, like, because I think if Thorne stuck around, at least one of Kim or Hauser would have transferred. They probably played out all scenarios in their head. And here they are. The decision's made easy. It's Kim. It's Hauser. And they're comfortable enough with saying, all right, yeah, we're actually pretty happy with that. So the number five good news that happened in this offseason, Dyron Reynolds and Jim Salgado. Uh, look, Brandon Jordan and Marco Coleman both leaving. That was a bummer. Uh, Brandon Jordan, of course, uh, was the door opener for a lot of top flight recruits. And there are some that are still considering Michigan State. Marco Coleman, uh, he was more of the hands-on coach in practice, the technician, if you will, and he went back to his alma mater down at Georgia Tech. So Michigan State had two openings to fill. I think they did a pretty good job. Jim Salgado, a guy with a lot of professional experience, and also loved Dyron Reynolds, a guy that's kind of well, taking the two defensive line vacancies and just filling it as one man. Um, he's been with Stanford for quite some time, was with Oklahoma for just one year when they were really good going to the college football playoff. And 
A lot of people down in Norman, Oklahoma, were bummed that he left after one year because he was on a one-year contract, kind of like what he is right now. Hopefully that can be fixed in the near future. But yes, I mean, Dyron Reynolds, there's a lot of uh, smoke around him in being a good defensive line coach. So good hire for Mel Tucker. Um, honorable mention for other pieces of good news this offseason, no one has launched an NFT either. So you could hang your hats on that one as well. A lot of offseason left. Hopefully a lot of good news left. We still do have a full June cycle of official visits. So of course, uh, when that starts to happen, you know where to find us, Lock on Spartans. Now let's flip it over to the baseball diamond. Um, and we don't talk a lot about baseball, you know. Um, sorry about that. Uh, but this is an important time to talk about baseball because not too long ago, we talked a little bit about baseball and the top eight teams in the Big Ten get to go to the Big Ten tournament. Michigan State right now, six-game losing streak. They have fallen to ninth place with one Big Ten series left on the schedule. And uh, some good news, all three games are going to be at home. The bad news, it's against the team that's in first place right now in Indiana, who just absolutely carved through Purdue. They scored more than 50 runs in the three-game series against Purdue over the weekend. So this is a hot Indiana team coming to town. But, hey, if you're not close to East Lansing, which, by the way, tickets for these games at McLean Stadium are, are like five bucks. Like So if you're in the area Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, if it fits in your schedule, take the kids, take yourself, go to McLean Stadium, enjoy a game. Uh, one of the cheapest tickets you could find around these parts. However, if you're like me and you're not really all too close to East Lansing, well, Big Ten Network is going to have all three games on their stations coming up. And this is going to be an important three-game series because right now, like we said, Michigan State, one game out of the Big Ten tournament. They are 9-11. and 11. Right ahead of them, Purdue is at 10-11. and 11. They're facing Nebraska. The Purdue Boilermakers are facing Nebraska, who is like – fourth or fifth in the conference, but yes, uh, Michigan State needs to probably win two of these games and then get some help from the Nebraska Corn Huskers as well to really have some luck in the Big Ten tournament. And that's a lot of parallels to basketball there, just watching Nebraska play Iowa, hoping that they win so MSU can get up to that double bye. Uh, yeah, so we, we are – Nebraska, if you're listening, which I know you are, Huskers love this show, come on. Uh, we're going to need some wins here against Purdue to help us in this Big Ten tournament coming up. It'd be the first time in quite some time Michigan State has made the Big Ten tournament, actually. So this would be a good one. Uh, to round out the show, we're going to double back to the conversation yesterday. Jamari Howard, and there were a lot of comments on YouTube about it, uh, LockdownSpartans at gmail.com. And a lot of it is always centered around, like, why bother with this when it comes to a decommitment? You know, like, why are we even caring about a junior committing? Oh, this is ridiculous. And I believe me, I get it 110% because, like, truthfully, I, I, I do wonder why. Well, okay, I know why I care if a junior commits. If a guy commits to Michigan State, we're always going to talk about it. But, like, if I wasn't doing this show here, the amount of stock I'd put into a junior committing anywhere, like, would just be the size of a grain of salt, I think. And I, the, the conversation I want to bring up is, like, I don't know why juniors commit as early as they do. There, there is only one circumstance I can think of that makes sense for a junior committing to a college. And that's if, if it's a program that is like a Titan, right? Like Alabama, Georgia, that might be it. Clemson when they're in their prime, perhaps USC these days too, could be a good one. Ohio state, I guess, but like you get it. Like I'm talking cream of the crop programs, talk to a junior who's maybe like a four star, maybe a high three star. And they say, Hey, you have to commit right now, or your spot is going to be taken by someone else. Like we only have so many of these golden tickets, young man, to join this great program. Come join right now. or You're going to lose your spot. That's the only time, the only time that it makes sense for a junior to commit. Now here's a harsh reality. MSU ain't one of those programs, guys, uh, at least not yet. Hopefully we can in a few years. I, that's that's the goal. But it doesn't make a lot of sense for a junior to commit before taking his five official visits, before playing out the rest of the year plus, up until signing day to hear from as many programs as he can, visit as many campuses as he can. I mean, why commit yourself somewhere before you even know what else is out there? And that's kind of what Jamari Howard did. Like He, he committed extraordinarily early 
last year. I think it was in the middle of last season, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, there's a lot of time left on his clock to commit. So I, I just, I, when, when a junior commits, especially if it's a guy like Jamari Howard, a guy that is not a middling three star, a guy that's probably not being approached and saying, Hey, you're going to lose your spot. Like, no, 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 no. That spot was always going to be there for Jamari Howard, right? Like this is a top 150 recruit, borderline top 100 recruit. He can commit here whenever he damn well pleases. So I don't know if it was a situation where he was told, hey, your spot's going to be taken, which like it's kind of on you for falling for that, Jamari. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but yeah, I, it's just why do it? So yeah, when a kid commits his junior year, I, that's that's always where my mind goes. Like, okay, what when's your decommitment date? Because eventually you are going to learn that, oh yeah, I got four other, five other official visits that I could burn up. Maybe I should go see all my options before I make a life-altering decision. That's just more of my rant from yesterday. Uh, it was more so the ranting on the Michigan State side of things, but now uh, allow me to be the grumpy old man yelling at the cloud of why are kids the way they are these days? Like, but no, really like, I just, I just don't get it. So again, Hey, if, if a junior commits like, Hey, let's say Nick Marsh, uh, you know, he wants to commit before his senior year coming up here. Of course, we're going to talk about it. It is very exciting, but God, it's just, you just almost got to hope that they go the whole recruitment without realizing how Silly of a decision it is to commit that early, but oh well, that's uh, my two cents on the conversation. Uh, we'll, we'll probably shelve it until the next time it inevitably happens because it happens at every program pretty much, except the ones I named earlier. All right, gang, we will be back on tomorrow's show again. If you have any mailbag questions, locked on Spartans at gmail.com is the place to find us. Comment below on YouTube, rate, review, subscribe. I think that checks all the boxes there. And one more thing, have an amazing rest of your day. Love you all. Go.